So what happens is that in pulpotomy, once you place a pulp, uh, pulpotomy agent onto your radicular pulp, immediately the pulp will become fibrous and acidophilic. Okay, formocrisol, you know, it is a uh, formocrisol because of its acidic content, immediately the pulp will become acidophilic. But at the same time in pulp capping with calcium hydroxide, it was becoming basophilic. That is because of the calcium hydroxide. And here it is becoming acidophilic. Now, in 7 to 14 days, you see three zones. The order of this zone, very, very important for you. You get confusing questions from this. Like what I've said about enamel caries and dentinal caries and the zones, you need to know the zones in the order. That is in which direction you see them. So what is happening is that this is your tooth surface, right? And this is your coronal pulp. So immediately adjacent to your formal result, what you see is a zone of fixation. Okay, so when you place a form of crystal, definitely the adjacent layer will be fixation. So you call that zone as zone of fixation. Then what you see is a pale staining zone of atrophy, atrophy or diminished cellular activity. Under the zone of fixation, you see a zone of diminished cellular activity. Now, after that, you see a zone of inflammation. Okay you see a zone of inflammation and then comes your vital tissue. And in one year of time, what happens is that there will be progressive apical movement and you see only the acidophilic zone left at the end of one year. So this is the mechanism of action of formocrisol, which is explained histologically. So in pulpotomy, the histological zones are given by Maas and Zilberman. The study, the name, it is given by Maas and Zilberman. And you see three zones. So if the question is like, uh, you explain the zones from the coronal portion towards the radicular portion, you will be writing zone of fixation, zone of atrophy, and zone of inflammation, FAI fixation, atrophy, inflammation, okay? Now, they are, if they are asking from the apex towards the cervical region, you have to write zone of inflammation, atrophy, and fixation. You have to study it both ways. Keep in mind, adjacent to the form of result, you will be seeing fixation. So then comes atrophy, then comes inflammation. So these are the three basic zones that you see in 7 to 14 days following a pulpotomy procedure, okay? Now, now, the next important pulpotomy thing that you need to know is the ferric sulfate pulpotomy. So, what is actually ferric sulfate pulpotomy? Ferric sulfate pulpotomy, okay. Under which category or classification of pulpotomy does ferric sulfate pulpotomy fall in? Yes, very good. It is preservation pulpotomy. So uh, ferric sulfate is a hemostatic agent. So what happens is that it forms a metal protein cloth at the surface of the pulp stem. That is on top of your radicular pulp stem, you see a metal protein cloth, which will act as a barrier to irritating component and will helps in the, uh, helps to maintain the vitality of your radicular pulp. Okay, so it forms a metal protein cloth at the surface of the pulp stem, which will act as a barrier. So in ferric sulfate pulpotomy, you also need to know what is the percentage of ferric sulfate used. So the percentage of ferric sulfate used is 15.5 percentage. Okay, the percentage of ferric sulfate used is 15.5 percentage. Okay, now the next type is a glutraldehyde pulpotomy. Now, what type of a pulpotomy is a glutraldehyde pulpotomy? Yes, good. Again, glutraldehyde pulpotomy is a preservation pulpotomy. Now, the next question is definitely, what is the percentage of glutraldehyde used? The percentage of glutraldehyde used in pulpotomy is 2%. Now, uh, you know that formocrisol is a devitalizing pulpotomy and glutraldehyde is a preserving preservation pulpotomy, right? So that is because glutraldehyde is having certain distinct advantages over formocrisol. Now, some of the problems associated with formocrisol is that formocrisol is associated with mutagenicity and antigenicity. So its use has been slightly declined over the few years. So a distinct advantage of a glutraldehyde over formaldehyde is that it will be having superior fixative property and it will cause less necrosis of the pulp tissue, causes less dystrophic calcification, and also it is less toxic. When compared to formaldehyde or formocrisol, the advantage, these are the advantages of the glutraldehyde. That is why glutraldehyde is falling in a preservation pulpotomy and formocrisol is falling in a devitalization pulpotomy. 
Okay, so keep in mind the percentage of glutaraldehyde that you use for pulpotomy is two percentage. Now, next thing is Sweck pulpotomy. So Sweck pulpotomy is given by Major and Sweck. So what is a Sweck pulpotomy? Sweck pulpotomy is actually a partial pulpotomy that you do in a young permanent tooth recently following trauma. Okay, for example, a young permanent tooth where the pulp is exposed and you feel that the remaining radicular pulp is, white, is judged vital by the clinical or the radiographic features and if the root closure also is not complete, you go for a partial pulpotomy. So in the case of a young permanent tooth, when you, perm, uh, when you do a pulpotomy procedure, that will facilitate the closure of your root apex or that will facilitate the continued formation of the root in the case of a young permanent tooth. So in sweat pulpotomy, that, that is done in a young permanent tooth following recent trauma. So now it is said that even up to around 7 to 14 days, the pulp will be, you can go for go ahead with the sweat pulpotomy. Now, sweat pulpotomy means only partial pulpotomy. So you're taking out only few portion of the pulp. So what is the amount of pulp removed in a sweat pulpotomy? The amount of pulp removed is 1 to 3 millimeters. Okay, so in sweat pulpotomy or in a partial pulpotomy, which you do in a young permanent tooth with an open apex and following a recent trauma. And if you see that if you judge that the tooth is vital and if there is only a minimal exposure uh, following trauma, you go for a partial pulpotomy or otherwise called a sweat pulpotomy. And the amount of pulp tissue that you remove is only around one to three millimeter. Okay, so that is sweat pulpotomy. Now, mortal pulpotomy. So mortal pulpotomy means uh, normally what is the treatment option for a non-vital tooth? In a non-vital tooth, you generally go ahead with a pulpectomy procedure, right? You don't go for a pulpotomy because pulpotomy is a vital pulp therapy procedure. But in some cases, what you do is that because of the non-negotiable root canals and the limited patient cooperation, you have to go ahead with a pulpotomy is partial pulpotomy same? Partial pulpotomy of what same? Partial pulpotomy same with what? In young permanent tooth, you do a partial pulpotomy. So X pulpotomy is a partial pulpotomy that you do in young permanent tooth. That is one and the same. Okay. So but again, going back to mortal pulpotomy, <clears throat> mortal pulpotomy, as the name says, it is a non-vital pulpotomy. So what is that? Ideally for a non-vital tooth, you go for pulpectomy, but due to the non-negotiable root canals and limited patient cooperation, sometimes you have to go ahead with the pulpotomy procedure. That is what you called a mortal pulpotomy. So do you remember what were the agents that you use for a mortal pulpotomy? Mortal pulpot, mortal pulpotomy. It was there in a class. Yes, good. It is beechwood crisol. Beechwood crisol is the agent that you use for a mortal pulpotomy. Okay, good. Now, <clears throat> now moving on to laser pulpotomy. What do you mean by a laser pulpotomy? Laser pulpotomy falls under which type of pulpotomy? Laser pulpotomy falls under which type? <clears throat> yes, it is devitalization pulpotomy. Now, which is the laser agent that is used for pulpotomy? The laser most likely used for pulpotomy is your NDAC laser. Okay, so NDAC laser is the laser that is commonly used for a pulpotomy procedures. Again, an important question for you. Now, moving on to the next type. That is a dental hemogram. What do you mean by a dental hemogram? This is probably a new topic for you. I have seen this in one of the options in your as one of the options in your AIMS or AIPG question. That is why I thought I'll just include this dental hemogram. So dental hemogram is given by Guthrie. So what is uh, so what he uh, actually measured is that he investigated the WBC differential count of the dental pulp to determine whether the pulp whether the coronal pulp or the radicular pulp is involved. So this is not a practical diagnostic method. So what Guthrie has done is that the first drop of blood from the exposed pulp, he used that for a 
for making the hemogram then what you do is what he did is that he ex extracted the teeth and he sent it for histological analysis and based on the histological examination he just found out uh, whether the inflammatory process was localized to your coronal pulp or your radicular pulp and uh, identified which are the cases that are good candidates for a pulpotomy procedure okay so as the method goes you only know it is not a practical diagnostic method you cannot just go ahead extract a tooth confirm histologically and you cannot go and place it back right so this is just for a study purpose dental hemogram is based on the wbc differential count of the dental pulp so once you go for a pulpotomy procedure the first blood drop that you get you you give it for a histological analysis and you see whether the coronal pulp or the radicular pulp is involved and you can easily pick a patient which are good candidates for a pulpotomy procedure. It is not a practical diagnostic method. I have just included in the slide so that you just get to know what a dental hemoglobin